warmer summer months, lots of things are on the minds of homeowners, including curb appeal and the look of their home from the outside. And here to talk about some things that we could do to improve the, the, improve the curb appeal of our home is HGTV host John Gidding. John, welcome to the program. Thank you very much for having me. It's good to have you here today. So um, I want to talk to you about, uh, I want, wonder if you could talk to us actually about some key findings that were um, from a survey of homeowners about their homes recently. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah, this is fascinating. It turns out in a recent survey of homeowners, only 17% of homeowners thought their home looked good from the front. So in other words, 83% of homeowners said, my gosh, I need a little bit of curb appeal right here and I don't know where to start. Um, I think the reason for that is because people know that money flies out when you start doing exterior projects. It can usually be expensive, but it doesn't have to be. That's the whole thing about curb appeal. Small tips and tricks, very precise things to do to the front of your home will vastly improve not only how you feel when you come home, but even your property values. Absolutely, and that was going to be the next thing that I asked you. What are some things that we can do that are um, cost effective or, or don't cost a lot of money that we can do to spruce up our home and thus improve the curb appeal? I would say the top five, six, seven things to do are all completely, all put in uh, less than $1,000 total. Um, I do big curb appeal projects and I obviously spend more than that, but I've found that with the five or six small things, all under $1,000, you'll make a massive impact. What are these things? Well, let me tell you. Um, I find that the best thing to do is to focus on the entry process. Everything that you touch and see on the way from the sidewalk to the front door, that's where you should spend your smart money. So it usually starts with a mailbox, a house number, a path from the sidewalk directly to the front door. If all you have is a driveway, you don't have a path to the front door and you need one. And then when you get to the front door, a nice bright color on the front door itself is one of the easiest ways to draw people's attentions to the entryway and that's what makes a house feel welcoming. Yes, absolutely. You know, and when you talk about uh, the color of the door and using a, a bright color that kind of attracts people to the doorway, I, some people are, I've noticed, are kind of timid about using those brighter colors. What, what can you say to those folks? Well, I can say this is why I'm here for you. In fact, this is why I teamed up with Sheridan Williams for National Painting Week, mainly because there's so many easy tips and tricks out there, and we need to compile them and make them available to homeowners so that it's no longer this mystifying process. When it comes to a front door, my easiest rule of thumb is go with a jewel tone. Now, obviously, this is a blanket statement. It may not work with every single house, but it works with almost all of them. A jewel tone is something that's going to be bright and saturated, rich, really draws people's eyes to the front door. Now, granted, if you've got a style of architecture that you know, for example, is Victorian, is, is uh, ranch, is craftsman, then you can always go to the books and see which colors have worked historically for your style of home. But for the rest of us who live in sort of a mishmash of styles or aren't 100% sure exactly where we stand, Go with a jewel tone and you'll probably pick a gorgeous color. Very good. What are some of the um, colors that are trending now for 2015? What do you see as happening this summer? Well, for exteriors, it's neutrals all the way. And that's because when you're creating uh, facade colors, it's all about the fabric of the community more than it is expressing your personality. But for interiors, I find darker, more saturated colors are becoming a lot more popular this year. And maybe it's because we're no longer concerned about trying to make every room seem as big as possible. That's why we used to paint all our rooms, you know, all these light, airy colors. But now we're painting them a little bit darker. The taupes are back, the grays are back, and it becomes a much more luxurious look. And that's the look people are going for in their interiors. What I'm curious uh, to know, we've talked a lot about like the colors of the house and you know the, the different ornamentation and things that are on the house. What effect does landscaping and your yard have effect on curb appeal? Landscaping is, you know, it's a difficult uh, animal to tame, mainly because it can be expensive and it can be high maintenance. And those are two things that people definitely do not want when they're looking for a new property to purchase. But if you can make your landscaping look effortless and keep it relatively uh, low maintenance and native plantings, then you're probably on the right track. When it comes to landscaping, I say keep it simple. Make sure that you've got a, a nicely mowed lawn. Make sure you've got some color out by the sidewalk where, the, uh, where your path meets the sidewalk. And also you've got a little bit of color out by the front door. But between those two areas, that's where you should spend your money. The rest of it should be as simple as possible. HGTV's John Gidding joined us on the line. Thank you so much for the information and for the tips today, John. You're welcome. And for more tips and for a compilation of all the things I've told you, go to SWPaintingWeek.com. 
Absolutely. You have a great day, and we'll be right back with more Talk of the Town.